Right, thank you very much. Yes, I am Austin Spruce, um, admissions tutor for both medicine programs run at our, our medical school, the five year program, and also the four year graduate entry course. Um, I'll be talking about the, the admissions processes for, for both of those programs as, as I go through, go through my slides. <clears throat> so this first slide gives you an overview of the information that we use to make a decision on who we invite for an interview, first of all, for the five-year program. At Birmingham, you are required to sit the University Clinical Aptitude Test, which must be taken in the year that you are applying. The score, the applications, oh, we score, the applications of home non-graduate applicants based on GCSE grades, UCAT result, and for the first time, contextual information. The slide provides the percentage contribution of each element to the score, and I'll talk more about each of these issues later. Whilst we do not score your personal statement, we expect to see evidence of your commitment to medicine. You should look upon your personal statement as the document that summarises what you understand about medicine and the evidence of the development of your skills and attributes. These are the issues that we will explore at interview. You're also required to provide a reference which should confirm your, your aptitude. And if this is relevant, the reference should identify any concerns or extenuating circumstances that have affected your education. For our five year programme, our standard offer is set at three A's at A level or three sixes at high level for the International Baccalaureate. And the subjects must include biology and chemistry. We accept a wide range of subjects from the arts, sciences and humanities for the third A level, but, or, or the third subject at higher level, but not um, for the A levels, general studies, critical thinking or the EPQ. You do not score achieved or predicted grades, though a minimum of AAB or 665 must be predicted. AS grades are not used at all in the selection process. I should advise that if you receive calculated grades this year, even if the results do not match our offer requirement, we will still consider an application from you. But this is on the understanding that you will undertake examinations in those subjects where your grade falls short of our requirement. In other words, we will accept a mix of calculated and exam grades, so you do not need to take examinations in all subjects if one or two of your calculated grades are already at the required level. To fill our available places on the five-year programme, we interview approximately 1,300 applicants and as, as a rough guide, we'll make about 900 offers. And for selection for interview, we score each application. For GCSEs, we will score seven subjects. Five of them are specified and these are both of the English subjects, language and literature, maths, and two sciences, either biology and chemistry or double award science. The final two subjects can be any four GCSEs. We allocate scores based on the grades. UCAT is being delivered this year, as you will have read on their website, and then you will also read that it will be possible to take the test either in person or online. And when we receive the UCAT results for our applicants, what we do is we rank, we rank the total score of the four UCAT subtests and segregate them into decimals. We give the top score in our process to the top 10% of applicants. And then finally, we will allocate a contextual score if you attended a school that we characterize as contextual. The next slide says a little more about that. The value of the score will depend on the Polar 4 quintile for where you live. The UK is divided into local areas and the Polar 4 measure indicates the proportion of young people in an area that enter higher education. Therefore, if your postcode shows as Polar 4 quintile 1, this represents that your local area is in the lowest 20% in terms of the, of the proportion of young people to enter higher education. In our scoring process, an applicant from the lowest quintiles, one or two, receives the maximum score of 2.5 points. And we rank applicants according to a combined application score out of 10. Therefore, 
there is no threshold for any of the individual components. And please note that it is not possible to advise on the threshold score because this will vary each year according to the number of quality of applications we receive. To find out if you are likely to be offered an interview, please use our calculated tool available on our website. The guidance you receive is based on data from previous admission cycles and also the projected impact of advertised changes to the process. It is important to note that this tool is a guide only and does not guarantee either an invitation to interview or an offer to study at the University of Birmingham. <clears throat> we recruit students via the University's, University of Birmingham's widening participation programmes called Pathways to Birmingham. I'm not going to say anything more about those pathways here, except that full details of eligibility criteria are on the website that I give on the slide. There is a national strategy to widen access into medicine and to further help us achieve that, we use contextual data. Actually, we have used contextual information for some years, but previously we assigned 20% of interview places to contextual applicants. Now, as I've mentioned, we incorporate contextual data into the calculation of a score for all home applicants. It is important for me to advise you that modeling of this mechanism shows that it, is an, it has minimal impact actually on the proportions of interview candidates from non-selective state schools versus independent or selective state schools. The impact of the mechanism is actually on increasing the proportion of candidates from lower polar four quintiles. A score is assigned based on attendance at a contextual school, which is identified based on school performance data for GCSEs or A-levels in order to to differentiate the scheme from Pathways to Birmingham, the threshold for inclusion of a school in the contextual category is set quite high and about 90% of state schools are included. An applicant need attend a contextual school only for either GCSE or A-level, not both. And if successful following interview, applicants who attend a contextual school will receive an AAB offer. I would like to emphasize that I recommend using the calculated tool we provide on our website, because that will guide you in, um, in assessing the likelihood of, your, of whether you will be invited for interview or not. <clears throat> our graduate entry medicine programme is another route into medicine. We have 40 places available on this course and receive over 20 applications per place. You score an application, again, based on a number of factors, which are some, somewhat different from the five-year course, inc that including obviously results from the degree, but also results from secondary school, as well as the overall UCAT school. An applicant must offer a life science degree. We define this quite broadly, but there are exceptions. We adjust the score we assign to A-levels if an applicant attended a contextual school, which is identified in the same way as for the five-year programme except we consider only the school attended for A-levels. We wish to also recognise the acquisition of skills gained through postgraduate study or employment. Therefore, we score the time spent in the, these activities. And full details of, of that scoring process is on, is on our website. Graduates are also considered for our five-year programme. We do not score an application for, for, for a graduate applicant for the five-year course, requiring only that threshold results are achieved in the degree and A-levels. We are much more flexible on the type of degree obtained, but the A-level subjects must include biology and chemistry normally. Graduate applicants for the five-year programme who meet our academic requirements will be selected for interview using the total UCAT score. I'm now moving on to talk about how you should prepare for interview as well as the qualities we are assessing at interview. In order to help you succeed in the interview process, it is really important that you gain an understanding of healthcare practice. Normally, the best way to develop this as well as your skills in providing patient care is to have an active role as a volunteer. And we know that lockdown curtailed these activities but you will not be at a disadvantage if you do not offer these experiences. 
And what we have done instead is gather together a range of useful online resources to replace face-to-face -face activities. One of these that we particularly recommend is called Observe GP, produced by the Royal College of General Practitioners, which contains videos of simulated doctor-patient consultations. For this and all the resources we provide, it is important to complete a reflective diary. We provide guidance and resources for this too. We will expect our interview candidates to be able to evaluate their own understanding and abilities. So it is important that you have a lot of practice at doing this. We recognise that extracurricular activities will have mostly stopped, but this doesn't prevent you entirely from engaging, even if only remotely with other people, other than your family and friends. We suggest sites that will allow you to connect with others. By interacting with the public, you are developing skills and qualities that are very relevant for interacting with patients as a doctor. And practice interviews are vital. These can happen online, which would be good practice if your actual interviews are online. And on that point, it is important to acknowledge that we may have to deliver some or all of our interviews online. For our face-to-face -face interviews, we use multiple mini interviews and we will aim to deliver a similar online format, though we expect it will need to be more restricted in scope. We are currently considering the design of our interview process for next year, and we will update our website when this is complete. Currently, our website describes the, st the stations we use this year, and we will aim to deliver a process that is close to that, <coughs> but there will be differences. <coughs> The common formats you will encounter are indicated on this slide. It is important that you prepare for these. The main criteria we are trying to assess are listed here too. And my advice to you is to work through a process where you identify what is inspiring, interesting, disturbing, challenging about medicine. Be able to explain why this is. Work out what facilitates or impairs good healthcare practice. Form your own opinions on controversial issues and reflect on your own abilities. And finally, we expect candidates to understand the importance of development of their personal qualities to be effective practitioners. I hope you found this information useful. A comprehensive breakdown of entry requirements and the admissions process, including interviews, can be found on the Applying to Medicine section of the Birmingham Medical School website and we give um, URLs on, on the slide. Thank you for listening to this talk on the medicine admissions process. I hope you apply here and I wish you the best of luck with your application. <laughs>